I am your host, Muhammad Hashim, and alhamdulillah, today we have in our studio Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We also have with us in the studio today our studio audience. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, on our show, Misconceptions, we are talking about one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of non Muslims, especially, uh, have about Muslims in particular. It's about Jesus in Islam. What, uh, how do, what do we consider Jesus in Islam? How do we consider Jesus in Islam? So, Sheikh, I'll get you to start about how do we look at Jesus? Or okay, this is a subject that's worth many, many programs, yeah. volumes, if not libraries, full of books, tapes, videos, all about this subject. So no just, doubt about just it. Just before you begin, I remember in Australia, just before I came here about a year ago, we all wore T-shirts saying, Jesus is the beloved prophet in Islam. And people were surprised that we even had Jesus in Islam. So that was... It's amazing that we... It might be one of the best kept secrets on the planet how much we actually do believe about Jesus. Let me first begin, I think, by showing what we have that's the same. Then we can begin to look at differences. First of all, Jews do not believe in Jesus as a miracle birth, that he was the fulfillment of prophecy, that they don't accept him as the Christ. They don't accept him as the Logos or the Word of God. They also don't accept that he's with God and will be back in the last days. All of these things, however, are part and parcel of the belief in Islam. We must believe as Muslims in the Quran. And the Quran is telling us clearly that Jesus is a miracle birth, having no father. And that he is the son of Mary. And Mary is a virgin giving birth to him. Additionally, we find that the Quran is telling us that Jesus even spoke as an infant to the people, telling them who he was and what his message was, and his mission as well. Then we have in the Quran that Jesus did these miracles of curing the blind, the sick, the lepers, etc., and even giving life back to someone who had died. So we know about these miracles that Jesus had, and we must believe in them. Additionally, we know that Jesus didn't die, but rather he's with Allah and he will be back in the last day. That's according to prophecies of Muhammad, peace be upon him. him. These are where we have the same things without doubt. We must believe in Jesus as the Word, as the Christ, as the miracle birth, as the prophet, and as the one who will return in the last days as the Messiah. That's all part and parcel of Islam. What I'd like to do now, though, is look at what some of the differences are, what other people have said to us as Muslims. When they hear us talk about Jesus, they'll say, yeah, but you don't believe that he's God, for instance. Uh, You don't believe he's the prophesy. We could go on and on and on, but I think it's a good chance maybe to ask our studio audience. They're here and... You, you have a question? Yes, yes. Okay, sure, go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, some people say uh, Muslims uh, don't believe in Jesus. I- is it true? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question, and that's perfect to start with. It's, yes, we do believe in him, but as what? Hmm. Do, would we accept that Jesus is a God? And well, that's a good question. Because we do accept him, we've already said that, but yeah. as what? If we said, okay, Jesus obviously must be God because he said he was. Where? Well, we have here in the book of John such and such. Or in the book of Luke, in the book of Matthew. We have all these books telling us that Jesus said he was God. And we look at it a little closer though. Do you mind if we go back to some older manuscripts and look at the language? Did it actually say he was God? Or did he call himself Son of Man? And they say, well, no, it's all the same. Wait a minute, why would you say Son of Man is the same as God? Well, because it's capital S and capital M. It is, it's capital S, Son of capital M, Man. There you are. (laughs) And we'd have to laugh because there are no capital letters in the Semitic languages. Not in Hebrew, not in Arabic, and certainly not in the Aramaic of Jesus. So this is not a valid argument. We would just say... He is the son of Mary. Very clear. As far as being son of man, that's son of Adam, and all of us are son of Adam, no okay. doubt. But uh, let's, let's take another question. Yes, I have a question. Okay. Uh, was Jesus a miracle birth, and what's about Muhammad's birth? Okay, that, <laughs> that's a very good question. The miraculous birth of Jesus. All right. 
Jesus was born to a woman, Mary, but had no father on earth. So they will assume, okay, then God automatically is the father. Well, why would you say that? Why wouldn't you say the angel was the father? Because the angel's there talking to Mary. Or why wouldn't you say that, well, this is just something that happened by accident? Or why, why would you assume immediately that it has to be God as the father? Well, then there's language using the term father. But actually in Quran it's very clear. It tells us how Jesus came about, that he is the Logos. Now that's what we find in the Kone Greek. Kone Greek uses the word Logos. And in Arabic it uses the word Kalama, or word. Mm -hmm. Just as the word Logos means word, so the word Kalama is saying the same thing. That God spoke the word, the word became flesh and bones, and that's how it happened. This is what we have in the Quran. That whenever Allah wants something to happen, He merely says, Kun Fayakun. Be, and it is. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of Jesus. The spoken word of God Almighty becomes flesh. Now, by the way, if the fact that He has no father makes Him a God and worthy to be worshipped, then we'd have to ask, what about Eve? Eve, stop and think about it, she has no mother. Hey, that's pretty cool. Stop and think. Mm -hmm. Here's Adam, and his wife is coming out of his rib. This is what we believe as Muslims. That's what Christians are taught. That's what the Jewish are taught the same thing. The Old Testament, New Testament, and Last Testament all say that Adam is by himself, and then his mate, Eve, is taken from his rib. And here now, we have a miracle creation. So are we going to worship her? We're going to pray to her? I don't think so. And then carry it to another level. What about Adam? Forget about everybody else. Adam himself, he was created out of mud, out of dirt, out of clay. Mm -hmm. There's a miracle. No mother, no father at all. Just mud. <laughs> We're not praying to Adam, are we? No. no. So that is not a logical argument. Now, what about the second part of what you said? You ask about Muhammad. Okay? Muhammad had a normal birth. He was born to a woman. And a man. Now, his father died before he was born, but that's irrelevant to the story. There was a normal conception and birth and a normal death. By the way, this is a proof that Muhammad is fulfilling prophecy in the Old Testament. If you read in Deuteronomy chapter 18, Muhammad verse 16, 17, 18, you see about a prophecy of one who will come to be like Moses as a prophet. And you find that, in fact, Muhammad fulfills that very much. Both of them normal birth, both of them normal death. Both of them having wives, both of them are living and breathing and eating and so and so. And not like Jesus, peace be upon him, who has a miracle birth, a miracle way that he leaves the earth, miracle way that he's coming back. All of that's miracles. But by who? Who's doing the miracle? And you can look in the Bible itself and it tells you, Jesus said, I don't do this of myself, but the one who sent me. Everything he's saying was by the permission of Allah. In every single case, it was because Allah caused it to happen. That's how we would understand it. We have another question. Yeah, I have. Yes. Um, Non-Muslims say to me, can you tell us about the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost? Yeah. Okay. The Holy Ghost is a mistranslation. This comes in the older versions of the translation of the Bible. Because as they updated this and made some different translations, they realized ghost wasn't the proper term. They changed it in more in keeping with the word that was used from the Kone Greek to be spirit, Holy Spirit. And by the way, this now coincides exactly with what we have in the Quran describing the position and the level of hierarchy of the angels. Ruh Kudus exactly means Holy Spirit. That's the title given to the angel Gabriel. He is the Ruh Kudus. He is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, which is the angel Gabriel, comes to Mary, peace be upon her, and tells her she's going to have a baby. And he is saying that to her and scares her. And she says, well, how is this possible? No man has touched me. And then he said, even so, 
For Allah, all things are possible. He merely says, be and it is. Kun fayakun. So the Holy Ghost is none other than the angel Gabriel. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me, but how can we sum all of that up, Shaykh? Ah, well, first of all, when we talk about do we believe in Jesus, the answer is absolutely yes. There's no doubt we believe in Him. Do we believe in the miracle birth? Yes. What about Muhammad? Muhammad is not a miracle birth. Yes. Okay, but what about the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost we've already described as being the angel Gabriel. And surely, without any doubt, we believe this, but we don't make any partners with God while we're saying all of this. We still keep God separate from the whole subject here. Still God is God, and this is something in the creation. In the creation. Okay, we're going to go for a quick break now, and inshallah, when we return, we can continue our misconceptions about Jesus and how Jesus really is in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers. And that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. And this is knowledge that we need to learn. That's why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Misconceptions. I'm Muhammad Hashim and with us today we have Sheikh Yusuf Estes. We are continuing with our misconceptions about Jesus and how he fits in Islam and how we as Muslims see Jesus. So Sheikh, what are we up to in, in our conversation about Jesus? One of the things I'd like to do is stress how much we love Jesus. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. I, I think that's a, 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 an item that Muslims don't stress enough. Because don't we always say, alayhi salam after his name, peace be upon him. And peace be upon his mother. We know, for instance, his mother is the best of women. Because it says so in the Quran. Allah says, Mary is the best of women. Wow. And then on top of that, when we talk about Jesus, we honor him so high. We put him above other human beings. Because we put all of our prophets above other human beings to such a high level. But we don't put them in the same level as God just above all the human beings, but no difference between them as prophets. And this is what the Quran is teaching us. Put these prophets up there. Don't let any of them have any kind of a, even a tinge of something bad against them. This is not right. Put them all up high. Look up to them as leaders and teachers. And don't say bad things about these prophets. For sure, we believe Jesus only did the very best, but he still wasn't God. Can I ask you a personal question, Sheikh? We, we stress a lot when, when someone says something against Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. I, I'm, I'm saying this in hope that we, can, we as Muslims can do this also for Prophet Jesus, if people offend Prophet Jesus. Or... Uh, Muhammad, we've already done this. Mm. In the UK, about 15 years ago or so, maybe even before that, there was a play that they were going to do, and this play had a very derogatory role that they were offering Jesus. Jesus yeah. The Muslims were out in the streets with their banners up saying we won't stand for that. The Christians joined them but the Muslims initiated this thing and were very instrumental in stopping them from putting on this play which put Jesus down a very low and bad way. So we need more of that. Yes, cooperation together is very important. I was thinking maybe we should ask our, our brothers here in the audience, uh, uh, what else do you have had people say something to you or uh, about our beliefs about Jesus, brother? Yes. I had a question. Uh, what about Trinity? The Trinity? Is there a Trinity in Islam? Is there a Trinity in Islam? Okay, what is Trinity? It's the word T-R-I in the beginning, tri means three. three. 
Now, that's very clear. It's what it means is Latin. And at the time that the Catholic Church took over one part of Christianity in the year 325 A.D., the Romans at that time had a triune government. And you had to be a member of their church to be a full citizen in Rome. Otherwise, the Roman Empire didn't recognize you as a citizen. So that's the influence of this triune concept. Had to be also in the church. And it was very convenient for them to take three things and try to make one out of it, which was the idea of God as being one, and we have that. But then the idea of Jesus also has to be a part of that. We don't accept that. And then the third is to make the Holy Ghost, which we've already discovered is none other than Jabril, who has already been here. He's not coming later or in the last days or anything. He's already been here. And put them all together and call that three. That's pretty much how they came up with this idea. But for us, for you and I as Muslims, we recognize that they believe that. But we've been told in the Quran, tell the Christians, don't say three. That would be better for them. We talked about this in other programs. The Christians are the closest to us in belief. They are the closest. But still, this idea of Trinity keeps them away from us and keeps us away from them as far as being able to worship together. If they can get rid of that, we can get closer a lot quicker. God is one. Jesus is one. And the angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, is one. And they're not the same. The Father, Son, and the and Holy And they're, they're not in the same priority. Yeah. We wouldn't say that. We would say, yes, there is God. Yes, there's Jesus. Yes, there's the Holy Spirit. But they're not one and they're not all God. Yeah. Well, we'd have to break that up. We'd like to talk to Christians about it more in depth. We invite that too. Very much. Yeah, I've spoken to many Christians about that, and they say it's a mystery. But I always turn around and say, well, does your salvation have to rely on just a mystery? So they don't really know what to say when I say that. So yeah, me. if salvation relies on a mystery, a mystery, that's okay, I'll pass. I need yeah. something a little bit more sure. I need something a little bit more clearer, yeah. How about the Definitely. rest of you? Any brothers have anything else? Uh, I have a question, sir. Sure, go ahead. What is it? My question is, uh, Jesus did miracles, even gave life. Muhammad didn't do none of those things. Had no miracles. Muhammad had no miracles. Is this some things people said to you? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look and see. Did Jesus do miracles? The Quran says yes. The Bible says yes. Okay. According to the Quran, Jesus not only did miracles, he fulfilled prophecy himself and he was the Christ. In fact, he still is the Christ. And when he comes back, he'll still be the Christ. What does Christ mean? Christ is taken from Christos. Christos is Kone Greek, and that's taken from a translation from Aramaic, which is Mish. And this is the same as Hebrew and the same as Arabic. Mish or Mishia. What does Mishia mean? It is to wipe something, to wipe over. That's exactly the literal meaning of it. But it carried an idiom which is the significance of a king. When they used to anoint a king in Jerusalem for the Hebrews, what they would do is put a little olive oil on their fingertips and touch his forehead in front of all the congregation. And then they knew this is officially now our king. So that's where this mess comes from. Messihi. He's king of the Jews. No doubt about it. So that's where that came from. Now, as far as miracles are concerned, prophets also did miracles before Jesus. Uh, bringing the dead back to life, the bones of Ezekiel did the same thing. Other uh, prophets also did things of curing things. For instance, according to their Bible, they said that Moses' hand had leprosy and he put it in his, uh, inside his coat, pulled it out, and it was clear. We happen to think a little different about that subject, but the point is, they're saying this. And what about throwing his stick down and it became a snake? Okay, how about that? So there were miracles with Moses, miracles with all these prophets, including Jesus having miracles. But also Muhammad had miracles. The miracle of Muhammad that's the most known in the world, obviously, is the Quran itself still existing today as it did then, with no changes to it. But also the moon splitting, that's one of the miracles. Another miracle of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is when a tree, trunk, actually started crying. When he stopped leaning on it. Another miracle is when an animal is talking, telling the people about Muhammad. Other miracles about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when water came out of his fingers and there was enough water for all the people to drink. 
So we have testimony of eyewitnesses by name, who they are, where they were, when they came to Islam. We know who these people were who said this. Not just somebody said, somebody said. We don't even have an idea what that, where that's coming from. No, we know exactly who said it, who saw it, and testified to these many miracles. But that doesn't make Muhammad God either. Neither of them are God to us. What they are are messengers of God. Somebody delivering God's message. Sometimes saying it in the first person. If he said, for instance, God says the following. And then you say what God said. People leave out the part where you said God said it. You can say, wow, he must be God. He said, I'm God. No. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, God said, I am your God. Worship me. All right. You just leave the first part out. Wow, Muhammad thought he was God. No, he didn't say that. So it's a matter of selective listening and selective writing in some cases, you know. But yes, both of them had miracles and all the miracles came from the one almighty God to show they were really messengers. So, yeah. with the, sorry, were the miracles, um, so, like say Prophet Muhammad, uh, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, where each, each generation had its own miracle? Like the, the, the It would be applicable to their time. Something time. that was impressive. Magic. Magic, as you say, for Moses', Moses time. Moses. There was a lot of that prevalent at the time. Medicine and healing. And he made a bigger magic by, by Allah's will. And it was not magic. It was a miracle. It ate up their magic. And then at the time of Jesus, there was a lot of emphasis, on believe medicine. it or not, on medicines that healing. would cure you and healing and even bringing somebody back from the dead. Well, we believe it because the Quran says all this. The Quran confirms it, doesn't deny it, confirms and even proves it to us with no doubt because we have the miracle of the Quran itself. Let, let's take another question. Yeah, if take we one have more question. Just, just one more time for one more. Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. Did Jesus teach uh, people to start worship him as a god? Did, okay, did Jesus teach people to worship him as God? Jesus say, worship me as God, yeah. Actually, no. They will say yes because here it says this plus this and understand this and twist that around upside down and all around. But the fact is it doesn't say it in those words. What we find really that is clear, that has no, absolutely no doubt in it, clearly when he's asked a question, he gives an answer. And he says, this is who God is, and this is the number one commandment. What is the greatest commandment? Which one? And it's in Mark twelve twenty nine. He's asked, what's the greatest commandment? Hmm. And he says, peace be upon him, be upon him. to know, O Israel, the Lord, your God, is one Lord. That's the greatest commandment. And you have to worship him with all your heart, and all your mind, and all your strength. We have the exact same thing in Islam. We have to believe in God as one, and we have to know He's one Lord, and we have to worship Him with all our heart, and with all our mind, and with all of our strength. This is exactly what we have in Islam. There isn't any different. When people begin to go to something else, though, then they're going to have to modify, change, and make excuses and compromises to come up with this theory that they have. Even when you look at uh, some of the texts that they have still in their Bible, depending on which version you have, but it's telling us that Jesus is saying that he came to fulfill, that he did not come to destroy. He says he came to do the will of the one who sent him, not his own will. That he doesn't make these things on his own, but rather the one who sends him. It, it becomes clearer and clearer if you really want to know the truth. I highly recommend to everybody really look closely at what's being said. But consider the Quran because it still exists as it was at the time of Muhammad. There's no changes to it. There's not two versions to it. It is a miracle. Read it for yourself. This is what I highly recommend. And just before we do go, we haven't got much time, but just a burning one I really need to ask you. The crucifixion in, in Islam. We haven't got much time, but what can you say about what we believe about the crucifixion? Very quickly, we have a passage in the it's Quran telling us about the crucifixion. It says clearly that they didn't kill him, nor did they crucify him. But something else was made apparent to them, and they've been arguing about it ever since. They're still not sure about that thing which occurred. There are different versions of it, but for sure they didn't kill him. They didn't put him on a cross, and we know he's with God. And we know he's coming back, coming back in the last day. I wish we had time to go on and on about this. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you very much. We've run out of time once again. 
Thank you so much for watching Misconceptions. Thank you to the studio audience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.